Hey, what's going on everybody? Thanks for tuning in. Uh, it's been so hot here lately, so I'm trying to get done what I can in the shop while I can. Um, but we're powering through and we're getting stuff done. Uh, so today I'm going to walk you through how I made this barn beam bench. Uh, we were very fortunate to have some friends that had a torn down barn and they offered the, the beams and the wood up to us for free. Um, so we're making stuff out of it and putting it to good use. So today I'm going to walk you through how I made this bench. And with that, let's get started. All right, so the first thing I do is cut my beams down to length and I did these at 48 inches. Now I just take a draw knife and kind of soften up the, the corners a little bit, take some of the, the heavy uh, wood off and, and just kind of give it a nice hand hewn feel to it. And then I'm going to give it a light sanding just to take off a lot of the splinters and, and any of the sharp edges. I'm just going to go ahead and glue the pieces together as well, uh, just to give it a little extra hold. And this step is a little unnecessary probably, um, it's a little bit overkill, but I just wanted to make sure that I was getting a nice uh, tight hold together on the two beams. Now I'm going to mark out for running my threaded rod through. I'm going to put this rod through and I'm going to have exposed ends to it. So and as you can see there, I have my um, spade bit marked uh, with tape just so I don't go too deep. I want it recessed in a little bit on the ends, uh, but I don't want it going in too deep. So that's kind of my marker on uh, how far I need to go. Now I'm going to use an auger bit to go through the rest of the way. This is going to go all the way through um, to the other side so that my threaded rod can go all the way through to hold the pieces together. I just tighten both sides up at the same time so that I get equal uh, turn on the nuts so that um, I'm not turning one side more than the other so they end up even. And then I do the same thing to the other side. Now I'm just using a steel black pipe um, as the legs. So I put these pieces together and should give it a nice uh, industrial feel on the bottom. Now I'm going to poly this, now, this is my first time using uh, this type of poly in particular. It's a triple thick uh, poly, so my one worry was that it would be a little bit um, you know, too thick in some of the, the cracks and holes that it would stay white. 
um, but it, it ended up drying really nice and clear, so I was happy about that. You know, using the triple thick stuff like this, sometimes trying to get too much done at one time can be a bad thing, but it turned out good. I just make sure I get some of the extra dust off before I put uh, the coat of poly on the top and the sides. Now I did end up going back later. Um, I do two coats of this poly, which is supposedly um, six coats of you know a regular poly, uh, but it had nice coverage on it by the time I was done. All right, now I'm gonna go ahead and cut the feet. I'm gonna put a board across the bottom here to uh, give it nice little feet to sit on and make it sturdy. All right, so this is something I should have thought about before and Heather had pointed it out uh, last night, is that these raw edges are a little bit harsh compared to the nice, you know, dark brown of the rest of the piece. So typically, and I've, I've done this before, but you can take a torch and kind of burn the edges a little bit. Uh, it makes it a little bit, you know, darker and blends in a little bit more and then you poly over that. So I think what I'm going to do is go back and try to burn these edges with, with a torch. Um, I'm going to sand down the poly because I had one layer of poly on everything here. So I'm going to sand that down so it doesn't you know, burn and melt the poly in. Um, and I'm going to try uh, you know, burning that with a torch and blending it in a little bit better. I just give the ends a quick sanding to soften up the burn marks a little bit and blend it in. And then I lightly sand over with a high grit sandpaper um, over that first coat of poly to take some of the roughness off because we're going to go over it with the second coat. So you want to use something really high. Um, I wouldn't use anything under a 300 grit and you want to make sure that you're barely applying pressure. You just want to be taking some of that roughness off and kind of smoothing it out. And then make sure you use a rag to wipe some of that dust off before you go back over with your second coat. And now I'm gonna attach my feet. And the whole time you want to check to make sure when you're doing something like this that it's level because you know you're using old uh, reclaimed wood it could be a little off level uh, the nice thing about this black pipe is that you can kind of adjust it for level a little bit you can kind of screw and unscrew and uh, you know get it to the right height that you need
Hey everyone, thanks for watching. If you want to see some more projects that we've done with Barn Beams, check out these videos right here.